Chad Gobble, and this is my BMW E36 M3. Where do you want to start, in the engine bay? Uh, yeah, well, I guess we'll just do, we'll start in the interior, we're right here. So, yeah. uh, in the car, I've got some of the most comfy FA certified seats on the market. These are the Prismas. They're nice and they have a ton of cushion. They hold you well. You can really feel what's going on with the car. These then, are FIA uh, certified. Right? Yeah, they are FIA certified. I run comp in this car, so I got to make sure everything's uh, up to spec. Got the energy harnesses to go with it. The energy steering wheel and quick release. Uh, Holly is a big supporter of, my, of mine. And so is AEM, AEM uh, CD7 for the display. Uh, this gives me all my data, everything I need to know about the car is displayed on here. Uh, I've done a really simple wiring harness in this car. I just run off the Switch Pros. Everything's just on and off, no fuses, no relays. I mean, it doesn't get much much simpler than that. Chassis mounted shifter, handbrake, and I mean, I keep, this is this is my simple car. I have a another car that's everything but simple, but this is a simple car. And uh, me and my friend Danny did this cage. This was actually a customer's car of mine. Uh, for years and it went through multiple stages and then he decided he wanted to sell it and I bought it from him because me and one of my best friends built it and I was like it can't go anywhere else it's got to stay in the family so uh, I, I picked up the car so um, yeah that. cages all certified and everything like that too so you they, said that uh, it has a Holly ECU no Holly is one of my main supporters but this is running on a, a link ECU um, but Holly owns AEM I got the AM display. I run Holly on all my other stuff. I just run the link for the simplicity of the plug and play. On oh, there. okay. So, cool. and my my tuner that's been helping me with the car, uh, that's what he prefer, uh, prefers. And you always want to go with what your tuner wants you to run. So he's not fighting it, and he could do a better job if he's more comfortable. With the so, software. did you build this car for competition? This or? car was started as my friend's street car that he wanted to occasionally take drifting, and then it turned into like a little more of a drift car every time he'd bring it over it'd progress more and more and then we did a turbo on the stock motor and it made like 30 psi and we blew that up um and then it got a built motor in it and then it's had a couple different turbo kits my buddy over there he's got the old y body the old turbo the old seats the old harnesses a lot of the old stuff off this car so it's kind of cool this car has this car and everything that's happened to it has helped a couple people get into drifting now and it's provided me something cheaper to run than my other car and uh just a well sorted out it's usually well sorted out not today but it's a well sorted out drift car it just works yeah. so and it, it's simple but uh yeah we'll pop the hood here well, who did you say tuned this car? Uh, Sam over at 412 did the tuning on the car. Oh, okay. Uh, and he, he does a lot of boost to BMWs. Uh, his tunes are fantastic. He Yesterday I was out here fighting some issues with the car. Uh, not his fault. We had a, a wastegate that's failing. I still have a wastegate that's failing. Uh, he, he specializes in BMWs. He right? does these. Like, this is his thing. So uh, he does a lot of the boosted M50s and stuff like that. Um, and he does a great job. They they just work. They don't have the heat. Like this thing shoots like a four foot flame out of the hood. That's really fun. Um, and it's just been uh, a great car. I mean, it's been around for years. The last couple of events, I've been struggling with some stuff on this car. But I mean, that comes with with every drift car. Yeah. yeah and sometimes you even got like I got brand new parts on here that are failing and I'm fighting. But the motor was actually built for my street car is what I originally started building this motor for. And I was gonna sell it um, to help pay for some stuff. And then I actually ended up selling the motor that was in here and I took the motor I was building for my street car and it ended up in here. So this thing is like way overbuilt for this car. I only want this thing to make like 500 horsepower right now because that's kind of what the drivetrain can handle. Uh, but this motor was built to hold a thousand plus. So, but right now, uh, and it's it's proven because yesterday and today I've had a wastegate sticking and it's pushing like 31 psi, which is putting us probably a little over 800 wheel horsepower. And I'm snapping drive lines, uh, axle stubs, blowing up transmissions. Keep it at 500. It it works a lot better. But I know the motor can handle it. I need the seat time. I'm going to compete next weekend, so I'm like, 
just gonna make it work for the weekend and then i know this week i could have a wastegate here and it won't be a is problem. this what it currently makes a 500 horsepower yeah so when i go out my first lap it's making 500 and about my second lap when the wastegate gets nice and hot and it sticks shut we're making about eight something so oh, okay. but then the ecu goes into a safety where it sees all that boost and it like it shuts down and uh i'm trying to kind of drive around that problem yesterday and today but uh we'll get it sorted but i know the motor can handle it so um i'm probably working my turbo a little hard right now you got all forged internals yeah all forged internals so it's an m50 block stock four uh m54 b30 uh crank um the aero rods cp pistons a full vac valve train in the m50 non vanos head and uh yeah, I mean, for as far as the motor goes, it sounds like it's not a lot, but that it's got the treated studs and it's got some, we recessed the cut ring. If you're familiar with the cut ring head gasket, we recessed it into the block and it cuts into the head. So I could cram a ton of boost in here. And I mean, this thing makes makes good power and I I'm, I don't think I'll ever lift a head on this thing. <laughs> but yeah, that's the engine setup. Me and my buddy Damien, who's here, um, him and I did the fit up and made, and that. Uh, we did the fit up and then he did the welding on the up pipes here. So obviously it's my exhaust and then my wastegate and put all the shielding on and stuff because I'm a big detail person. I wanted to make sure that all the paint and everything stayed okay. And it kind of helped cover up some, some stuff that was a little sore on the eye, but this is great. I mean, at night it, I come out and I drive, it shoots a good four foot flame out the hood when it starts getting dark, like a little, another 30 minutes or so it'll be, it'll be a party out there. But yeah, I'm still running stock, like stock cooling system. I mean, nothing's, nothing's too crazy. It might seem really crazy, but nothing is too crazy. You could, you can make 500 horsepower on a stock motor. You just got to put a good cooling system in it. Um, I recommend the CX turbo spa manifold, treadstone intercooler, have a good fabricator, plumb it all up with, and keep the piping as short as you can for the charge piping. And that's what my buddy's uh, Damien has. And his car's held up for multiple events. He actually blew it up today, but that was a, a one, two, one shift. It wasn't a one, two, three shift. So that wasn't a, a strength of the motor thing. That was a, just, you know, something we, we all do at some point. So, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this, this thing's pretty well, pretty well gone through. As you can see, I'm a big detail person too, so. Is this like heat wrap right here? Or yeah, so this is a DEI uh, makes this heat shielding. It works great and it keeps the paint. Uh, when you don't have this, you'll actually cook all the seam sealer on the back side of this metal and stuff like that. So it helps keep uh, keep everything kind of nice and clean here. And then it's on the bottom side of this cover trying to keep the coils and everything nice and cool. I've never seen anyone run like heat wrap over like the wheel wells. Yeah, it's just, a, there's so much heat right here. I know I have a top mount turbo, but like what I was recommending a minute ago, I recommend the spa and bottom mount. You don't run into heat issues with the coils and stuff like that. I mean, it really, the top mount looks cool and everybody likes that, but the bottom mount is, that's what he's got and that's what came off this car. And I kind of wish I'd go back first. <laughs> uh, some other stuff I could show you in the back of the car. So big thing on these cars is the fuel system. You want to make sure that the fuel system could always handle what you're trying to do. Uh, and in these 36s, they have a saddle tank, so the fuel likes to slosh. So I've got quite the fuel system in here to keep keep things alive. So hold on a second, because I have to take the truck out. Okay. <laughs> quick disconnect. Hell yeah. Slightly quick. You just have to have a tool and take four screws out. Zeus fasteners. So as I was saying, with a good drift car, you need a good fuel system. So back here, I've got the radium surge tank and uh, the radium filter, and this is what's keeping things alive. So as the fuel sloshes, mm -hmm there's a buffer in here this tank always stays full so as the fuel sloshes this doesn't slosh because it's such a smaller smaller uh, container it can't really slosh has nowhere to go and there's a fuel pump in there so this is what's keeping the car alive i run this brace out back because i've got fuel suspension uh, with the true rear coil over uh, those are doing wonders i mean that's night and day difference i'm not going to throw anybody under the bus but i went from another brand to feel then this isn't a sponsored thing but uh the second i went to feel i started breaking everything and that sounds like a bad thing but i was breaking everything so i had so much grip and the coil over i had on it before uh i was able to run the same size tire and stuff like that and i didn't break anything so this i mean this setup is has been great uh we did a, a whole tuber end with drift cars you always just want to make sure 
that when when you hit or when you wreck you know where the damage is going to be so i know that this is the only factory sheet metal that i have at the back of the car so if i smack this corner it's going to fold up right here I'll cut this off i'll put a new piece on the back put a new over on it and then i can keep going these are all replaceable this is just thin wall tubing so it goes from you're kind of you want the impact to absorb you don't want it to hit everybody thinks you want something really strong but you don't you have something really strong you're gonna come into that turn, you're gonna hit the wall, and then it's gonna grab the back of the car and it's gonna slam the front end. So what you want is you want it to hit the wall and you want it to give and absorb. And that way you could stay on the wall and then you fix it when you come in, but it doesn't grab and throw you in. So this is a thin wall tubing. I have like multiple layers of protection here. I've got this tubing, which is like an 060. This is an 090. This is a 120 wall. So it gets stronger as we go in. And if I, if I ever mess up here, I've got some serious problems, so it was a bad accident. The rest of the car is probably totaled anyways. But yeah, it's a, it's a quick little overview on the car. It's It's been great to me. Um, it shreds, it's fun, it pours out smoke, it makes all the good noises and the fire, and it's just very, um, gets all the senses right, you know. A uh, good smell and everything too, so. But yeah, I mean, that's that's it. Get out there and build yourself a drift car and have fun, but keep it simple. You don't. I've been drifting since 2015 and I'm just kind of this, this last year, uh, I got this car. But other than that, I was naturally aspirated for years and I had a lot of fun. I got to learn how to drive. And honestly, you get the, you get the higher end, not the higher end, but the more power and stuff like that you get comes with more problems and everything. So, uh, just keep it simple, get out there and just go have fun. And yeah. these are a great chassis. You get a 328 stock motor to good suspension good angle kit and just go out and have fun that's that's what it's about and this is the best place to do it this is the wild west of drifting is out here at apple valley speedway we love it here uh they're so accommodating and stuff like that and it's a great place to learn they got a skid pad and they got the track so and they've done a great job at renovating things here it's come out really good so sweet is yeah. there anything else you want to show us or uh i mean that's about it i mean i could i could show you the yeah. angle kit if you want but <laughs> I really like the wide body kit. It's got the Fitman Lab over fenders on it. Uh, I built these little spacers because I like when the, the smoke pours out, it makes for a really cool picture. Uh, but the smoke will pour out of here. It allows me to fit a bigger tire. I was running a bigger tire on here for a while, but I've changed some alignment settings. I was breaking a lot of stuff. So body's still set up for the bigger tire, but um, the rest of it's not. But just stock M3 bumper. I, I cut out the diffuser because I don't have an exhaust coming out there anymore. And then I've got the, the front fenders here. And uh, that's the same thing. I've got them spaced out. I've got the bottom pushed in because I like the look of the, the tires sticking out like that. It, uh, that's just something I enjoy. Does so. this body kit come with those spacers or did you? No, I made them. It's just, and all it is is like the same thing that's holding my hood up. So all it is is some stainless steel threaded rod. I put some nut certs into, I cut it to the length I want it. I put nut certs into the end and I bolt it from the back and bolt it from the front. And that's all that is you can see in here they're just these little spacers to hold it out that's like super aggressive it looks good that's what I'm, I'm big on the aggressive i'm picky about stuff but i'm really big on the aggressive look i like that i want the car to look like it's gonna piss you off when <laughs> <laughs> or like it's gonna run you over you know it looks angry and that's, that's the look i like but the other thing i did years ago um, a lot of people have probably seen this on on rome's car but rome's a good friend of mine uh, and uh, I kind of showed him this trick, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take credit for this one, Rome. But uh, anyways, I started. I was looking at a picture online, and I thought somebody had done this to their headlights, and it was just something played a trick on my eyes, and I was like, oh, I like what they did there. And then I looked at it, and I'm like, oh, they didn't do anything, but I could do it. And so I came out, and then I I cut up the light. This is just a factory light. I just cut up and painted and it just makes it look so much more aggressive sorry me and my friend ran into each other <laughs> typical drift car Where, where'd you cut the headlight so this whole face this is normally clear and this this is completely covered so i put a tape line down here and then i just opened up the rest of it and it just makes the whole front of the car look a lot more aggressive it really does they're like mini eyelids like yeah kind of and i like it. it's kind of got the angry eye look going on and i yeah. i dig that so hell yeah but yeah that's about everything on the car there it and then you you mentioned you had uh, SLR. Yeah, I've got the SLR angle kit fuel coilovers here. I'll I'll go ahead and start it and I'll I'll show you. Oh yeah. I gotta start it to get it to 
do what I want it to do. Sounds right. so good. Yeah, it's, it's a good sounding car. So, great way to see your suspension here and all the wheel damage I've been doing the last couple days. But you can see the SLR angle kit here and the fuel coilovers. It's a killer combo, and these work great on street cars because they have Ackerman adjustment as well. And it, yeah, I mean, it just works fantastic. I'm super stoked with this. And as you can see, there's a there's a lot of angle in this car. I mean, I can I can throw this car backwards and still get it to do what I want. So that's full lock right there. Yeah, and it, well, it falls back a little bit when I let off the wheel, but that's that's pretty much full lock. And there's not a lot of Ackerman in this right now either. So how many but. degrees does that angle kit give you? Or is I don't want to say because I'm not a hundred percent. So I I want to be be wrong. Yeah. So I think I think it's about sixty. 60. So uh, did you um, modify the angle kit in any way, or is that like nope? But that's just a bolt-on angle kit. I mean, and it doesn't get much easier than that. And like I said, it drives great on the street. So. Oh yeah, that's a lot of angle. Yeah, that's wow. It makes it makes for it makes for a fun time for sure. It's also very forgiving when you have that much angle. You could start messing up and make it look cool when you have that much angle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's that's literally everything on the car now. Uh, stock trans, stock diff, stock drive line stock m3 axles I, I try to keep all that stuff simple because you start upgrading that and you start spending a lot of money yeah and that's what my other car is for my other car takes all my money this one's supposed to just work <laughs> yeah <laughs> hell yeah dude well cool. i really appreciate your time man yeah no problem and i'm sure he's got clips of me out there driving he's been yeah. filming today and stuff like that i'll give him some too and uh it's a good time it's my party car hell yeah dude thank you all right peace thank out you. have a good one thanks guys thank you